are these people? You ready for this story, Colin? Sure. Well, St. Patrick's Day was recently. What what day was that? Um, Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. So, um, there were some troubles over in Ireland. Not those troubles. Some other troubles uh, with... Uh, people meeting with Biden. So we're we're going to look into that. So this is from Mick Hall over at Consortium, right? And he writes, Irish eyes skull at Sin Fine St. Patrick's Day with Biden. The party leader's decision to visit the White House has provoked intense criticism in a country where support for the Palestinian cause remains the strongest in Europe, right? So... Uh-huh. He continues, many Irish eyes have been left scowling over a decision by Sinn Féin to visit U.S. President Joseph Biden at the White House to celebrate St. Patrick's Day amid genocide in Gaza. The party's leader, Mary Lou McDonald, is meeting Biden as officials alongside her associate, party Vice President Michelle O'Neill, at Friday's festivities. Joining Ireland's Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar, and Deputy Prime Minister, Michael Martin, um, it is a long-held tradition for Irish political, cultural, and sporting figures to visit Washington and take part in the diplomatic event, which celebrates the two countries' historic links. Over 30 million U.S. citizens claim Irish ancestry, including by him himself, who traces his, country, his roots to counties Louth and Mayo. The event is also a useful photo opportunity for politicians seeking votes on both sides of the Atlantic. That sounds, that sounds more, more correct, right? For Sinn yes. Féin, it is a further opportunity to cement its image as a mainstream constitutional party able to make pragmatic decisions and be a safe pair of hands as it faces into an election that could see it become the next government of the Southern Irish state. The party, which became the biggest grouping in the Northern Ireland Assembly after an election in 2022 that Sa O'Neill installed as his first minister, is currently polling at 28% of the vote south of the Irish border and can make another historic gain by leading a new coalition government after elections scheduled for March 2025. So here's Mary Lou McDonald and Michelle O'Neill, right? Uh, McDonald and party finance spokesperson Pierce Doherty had a two-day stay in New York this month, attending meetings with U.S. businesses operating in Ireland about future economic growth and opportunity. McDonald delivered a keynote address to an Irish unity summit in the city's Cooper Hall on March 1st, setting out her vision and into the partition of Ireland, which she sees as the democratic outworthing of 1998 Good Friday peace agreement. The agreement includes provisions for a future Irish border poll, which could enact constitutional change on the island if a majority voted for it. However, Sinn Féin's decision to go ahead with his White House visit has provoked intense criticism at home where support for the Palestinian cause remains the strongest in Europe and where many believe politicians are not doing enough to challenge Israel and its chief supporter, the United States. Nearly 32,000 Palestinians are now officially recorded as dead, mostly women and children, with Israel's bombing of Gaza taking on even more ghoulish forms. As Gazans die from famine caused by Israel's military siege, IDF tanks and rockets have been targeting crowds of starving people waiting for aid, killing 112 in the Flower Massacre southwest of Gaza City on the 29th. I know there's been a couple of those now, right? Which such yeah. scenes being replicated regularly and posted on social media as Israel continues its campaign of ethnic cleansing in what the International Court of Justice sees as a plausible case for genocide, tensions have been running high over the White House event. Popular Irish comedian, friends of the show, Taj Hickey, um, Tig Hickey, I think, took to Twitter this week to vent his anger and disappointment. He said, I've been a Sinn Féin supporter and Irish Republican since school. One of the things that attracted me to SF was its internationalism, its solidarity with the oppressed, whether that may be South Africa, Cuba, Palestine, etc. SF says Palestine will understand the party going to the White House for St. Patrick's Day because... We must put our own struggle, Irish unity first. But the simple fact is my friends from Gaza, Hebron, and Turkum don't understand. No Palestinian besides members of the PA can understand how their ally could shake hands with the sponsors of their ongoing genocide right now. If you love something, you appraise it honestly and want it to be better. It's never too late to do the right thing. 
So, yeah. Um, back in January, former party leader Gary Adams articulated the crux of Sinn Féin's position when he argued Irish Americans remained an important source of political support that helped to advance its cause. He claimed Palestinians would understand it needed to put its struggle first. Serious people involved in struggle understand that your struggle, whether it be internationalist, has to be your primary focus. O'Neill also rejected the argument that not attending would send a stronger message that genocide was taking place in Gaza, and it would be inappropriate to meet Biden given his deep complicity. She told Irish broadcaster RTE the party would raise the issue of Gaza and push for a ceasefire. Correct? The U.S. has always been a strong partner for peace and actually a critical player in achieving our own peace process, and I would hope that the U.S. would use that same pragmatism, the same approach they took to our peace process, and take that to the Middle East. O'Neill told Irish media in February that Hamas would eventually be a partner for peace in the Middle East and urged peace talks. However, many would see her characterization of U.S. peacemaking as naive at best, blitheredly ignoring that the dynamics of conflict in the Middle East are radically different to the Northern Ireland conflict. Sinn Féin successfully yep. gavelized Irish Americans to pressure its elected representatives to help it gain entry into peace talks and the political process in the face of a hostile British establishment and intransigent British Unionist population in Northern Ireland who demanded its exclusion and a military solution to the conflict. The Good Friday Agreement was brokered with the help of the Clinton administration, and in particular Democratic Party Senator George Mitchell, who Mitchell principles established the basis for peace talks in 1996. This is after the Troubles, the IRA, all that stuff. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, so by contrast, the U.S. is an apparent that a lot of members are still unhappy that they did and made concessions. Right. Um, here to tell you, by contrast, the U.S. is an apparent partner for war in the Middle East, giving the colonial settler state of Israel diplomatic cover in the U.N. General Assembly and U.N. Security Council, as well as billions of dollars in military support over the past five months of Israel's onslaught in Gaza Israel has long been a key geostrategic asset to pursuing U.S. imperial interests in the region. So, Care Bear, they did meet uh, Sinn Féin and Biden. Do you want to see what happened? Do you see what happened when they met? Yep. Cool. As you know, the Irish people are deeply troubled about the catastrophe that's unfolding before our eyes in Gaza. And when I travel the world... Leaders often ask me why the Irish have such empathy for the Palestinian people. And the answer is simple. We see our history in their eyes, a story of displacement, of dispossession, a national identity questioned and denied, forced emigration, discrimination, and now hunger. I mean, right to Biden's face, I feel like that... Right was something as you know performative maybe but you know apparently somebody took offense to it um because yesterday he said to biden we see our history in the eyes of palestinians right we just heard him today he resigned why do you think that might have happened care bear my guess is and this is an educated guess the Zionist got to him. That's my guess. I, I would have um, to think so. Um, it, it doesn't make sense that he will just bail given what he said. What he just said. So, yeah, someone forced his hand on this. I, I've not yet to have been able to do more research on exactly what happened, but I'll look into it. Um, but yeah, something's up with this. For sure. That's very serendipitous to say that and then bail. So Well, it's interesting because Obama met with Richie Vissi Sunak. Yes, recently. I believe it was Monday. Mm hmm And for a secret meeting. And now Sunak is saying ceasefire. Yes. So 
you can make the argument that Sunak is saying this because he's up for election now. Well, so we, all, anything we also to know, kind of the favor. and what we we've talked about with ceasefire being the ask, right? Is that that implies that you can start firing again at some later date, right? This isn't fix right. the problem. This is a band aid, right? And right. when really you should be calling for liberation of the Palestinian people, but you know what do I know? Um, or if you want to do a slightly better permanent ceasefire is what you should be calling. Yes. So, but even then, um, like you just call for the liberation of the country and give it back to them, you know? So mm -hmm. Indy in the chat, maybe he was planning to do this and wouldn't have done it to Biden if he wasn't going to resign. He was already peeing maybe. for five years. So, but yeah, <clears throat> well, I don't know. We'll look into it. I'm sure more will come out. I don't soon. know. I just feel generally pol politicians in power generally like that power and want to maintain that power as yeah. long as they can. So also plausible. I don't think personally you need that's likely. <laughs> um, I think he might have been a little knock knock on his door basically being like, hey, you fucked up, you know, <laughs> Right. Well, so that's what I think. But well, again, we don't know for sure. So all um, this I'm, we're saying is alleged. Allegedly, for sure. Well, we'll we'll see. But this article continues that U.S. officials also understood a peaceful island presented a better environment for U.S. multinationals to operate. Their presence bringing more political leverage over any future Irish government. And this is where the members of the IRA I know are upset about this. Right, that you know, it's essentially how we did Afghanistan and Iraq too. Right, you know, we came right. in, had a bun of, bunch of business interests, took down their leaders, replaced them with leaders who were sycophantic to us and the Queen. Right, you know, if Patty McGinnis is willing to go have scones and tea, something's up. You know, because <clears> things <throat> ain't fixed over there. So, you know, yeah, this is. Um, yeah, it's it's weird for sure. So a report in June 2023 by the American Chamber of Commerce, Ireland, said 950 American companies now operated in the Republic of Ireland alone, employing 376,000 people. These facts on the ground were brought to bear on the Irish government after the Occupied Territories Bill banning trade with and economic support for illegal settlements in Israeli-occupied territories was passed by majorities in both the Sanad and the Dale. It has been blocked by the current governing party, Fine Gael, while Sinn Féin and Fianna Fáil have stated they will enact the legislation if in power next year. Right? So, yeah, after the bill was passed, the Irish Foreign Ministry Minister Simon Conveney was warned the vote would mean commercial relations between the U.S. and Ireland taking a hit. More reasons this guy might have resigned, no? Um, right. Several politicians from the Irish-American stronghold of Massachusetts, including the Boston mayor, Marty Walsh, said the bill was anti-Semitic. A letter signed by 10 members of Congress warned of potentially severe implications to Ireland's economy. Okay? Some of Sinn Féin's domestic critics believe the party, well-versed in political expediency and compromise of its past radical politics, may succumb to such pressure just as easily as Cavani and his colleagues. Right? You know, two, two, ass, two cheeks of the same ass, as Galloway would put it. Right? Um... <laughs> Having evolved from the political wing of the provisional IRA, the modern Sinn Féin leadership has always walked an electoral tightrope of keeping its more traditional, radical supporters on board its political program while it strategically waters down its socialist and international politics to gain wider appeal as it edges towards entering government. What does that sound like to you, Care Bear? Does that sound familiar? 
yes feels familiar and terrible and just gross but yes you know <laughs> <laughs> yep irish palestinian activist farrar kootenay head of public relations at the london-based palestinian return center believes the party is using the palestinian cause to garner votes and its saint patrick's day visit demonstrates its lack of principle yep i would so, agree with that no cookies um no go away she is a former member of the party a letter sent to her belfast home in april last year announced her expulsion which she said did not give a reason in an opinion piece for the new arab she put it down to a class she had with a party go governor at a Palestinian working group meeting where she argued the party should update its policy on advocating a two-state solution and it was void in a settler colonial reality so she's trying to get them to go single state solution palestinian right yes yeah yes. so in february she was ejected from a sin fein meeting in belfast with another Palestinian activist after interrupting proceedings to object to the St. Patrick's Day plans and denounce the president presence of the Palestinian Authority representative to Ireland, Dr. Jalan Wahaba Abdul Mahid, as she was about to address the meeting. Um, Abdul Mahid is a popular victor, particularly within St. Find, who has been invited to various party events to address members and supporters. Katune, I, I'm butchering all these names, says the party's promotion of PA personalities like Abdul Mahid reflects that fact it has sold out its radical past and lacks any meaningful internationalism regarding the plight of Palestinians. She calls its support for Palestine stagnant performative activism, which includes its stated push for a ceasefire and peace process during its leader's St. Patrick's Day visit. The party has a long history with the PLO and other Arab anti-colonial movements. Libya's Colonel Muammar Gaddafi supplied the IRA with tons of modern weaponry and cash for two decades, right up until the late 1980s. Such militant connections may no longer exist for the party and its now defunct military wing, but such links have not fully dissipated in Ireland, as I was saying. In 2020, British media report claims of an MI5 agent outed with the real IRA, the RIRA, that the dissident group, which is still operating in Northern Ireland, has cultivated a relation with Lebanon's Hezbollah. Dissidents have also expressed solidarity with the Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republic, flying flags atop lampposts and housing estates across Northern Ireland, where they draw support. Ireland has maintained a military neutrality policy since its inception in 1921 and has refused to join the U.S.-led NATO military alliance, even though pressure to change that policy has been building since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, quote-unquote, in February 2022. Sinn Féin has been vocal in its defensive neutrality, yet its critiques of the U.S. proxy war in Ukraine align strikingly with that of NATO countries, seeing Russia as a colonial expansionist aggressor and a threat to European nation sovereignty. Its position arguably poses a danger of undermining its own rationale for keeping a policy which defines a big part of Irish identity. For those like Hickey and Cotonier, who Cotonine, I guess, attending Biden's St. Patrick's Day bash also betrays Ireland's long tradition of anti-imperialist solidarity. So, Fun stuff that happened, right? Um, I received with some surprises the news that one of my cartoons converted into a mural in Belfast was defaced. The cartoon in question criticizes the decision of the Irish Republican Party, Sinn Féin, Fiona Fail, and Fine Gael to celebrate St. Patrick's Day with Joe Biden, right? So there it is, right? Ireland says no to genocide Joe, right? And here it is after, completely blacked out, right? So, in the White House, in flagrant despise for that this is Carlos Latouf of Latouf Cartoons, one of the ones, I think he's over at Mint Press, right? Um, yes. Biden has the blood of Palestinian women and children on his hands, and anyone fraternizing with him is now complicit in his crimes. I've already had graffiti about police brutality defaced in Brazil, 
My cartoons are banned in Turkey, Egypt, and Bahrain, but in Northern Ireland under the Sinn Féin government. Usually only dictatorships see cartoons as a threat. Isn't North Ireland a democracy? I hope that the cartoon will be paint, repainted and then it doesn't suffer any more attacks like this because I believe that the Sinn Féin government, its allies, should respect freedom of speech. And here's, here's the original, right? So in case you wanted to see that. Um, but yeah, the party undoubtedly remains the most vocal supporter of Palestinian rights among European parties. It is currently pushing Ireland's coalition government parties to stop stalling on processing another piece of legislation it introduced before Parliament last year, the Illegal Israeli Settlements Discovered Bill 2023, which prohibits and restricts how Ireland's strategic investment fund is used. However, others in Ireland are more direct and uncompromising. The party may have underestimated how unpopular its decisions to pose for the cameras with Biden and court America's power structures would be. Irish member of European Parliament, Claire Daly, may have summed up populist sentiment in Ireland best when she chastised the U.S. for sending $17.6 billion in military aid to Israel, calling Biden a sick monster, referring to Ireland's own catastrophic colonial-inspired famine in 1847, she told the EU Parliament in Strasbourg on Wednesday. And here she is doing that. As the people of Gaza face agonizing death from orchestrated starvation, the EU is so concerned about the humanitarian situation that some of its member states cut the UNRWA funding and increase arms to Israel. The US is so troubled, it's building a pier and airdropping food, but there's hundreds of trucks already at the border crossing full of supplies. It's just they're being prevented from crossing by the same Israel that the US is sending another 17.6 billion in military assistance to. What sort of sick monsters are these? There would be no famine or genocide in Gaza if Biden restrained Israel. His support has been conscious and unconditional. So as the Irish politicians shamefully cross the Atlantic to doff the cap for Patrick's Day and pay homage to this butcher, they should remember that our history and relationship with the US comes from our famine. Irish Americans should know the people of Ireland stand against genocide, Joe. Shasamid Lesh on Palestine, Chucky Forlaw. Thank you. I couldn't agree more. Um, that that lady, bro, they... Yeah, that lady is a queen. We love her. Claire, I hope you got good security, she friend. I hope you got good security. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm sure she does. Uh, you better, uh, you know... Because she says some shit, don't she? Um, mm. Biden has supported Israel's genocide in Gaza consciously and unconditionally. His heart is not in the right place, but the darkest possible place. As Irish politicians flock to bend the knee to genocide Joe, they don't do it in our name. Irish people stand with Palestine. So, more great stuff from Claire. But, yeah. Anything to say? Anything to add? I mean, this is just another example of our so-called allies bending the knee yep. uh, to us, um, the United States, uh, and being complicit in what's happening in Gaza. And I think Claire Daly and everyone else that you mentioned in that segment is absolutely correct. Yep. Um, the fact that um, Shout out to Global Sorry. Is that Gaelic? Do you speak uh Gaelic? Global uh, Solidarity? A lot of a lot of people can pick up the there's usually phrases, right? So tick fade a la right. our day will come, right? She also like mm -hmm. the Aaron Aaron Gabra, that kind of stuff, right? You know. Right. Um you know, stuff that you see in Irish pubs everywhere, right? Um right. but yeah. So, but um, but anyway, like this is just another example of us spending the knee and actually not doing us any favors by being complicit in what's happening in Gaza right now. And I mm -hmm. think the fact that again we celebrate St. Patrick's Day 
over the weekend while people were out getting drunk, you know, like yeah. The 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 actual um beginnings of the holiday has it, well Patrick, well according to legend, yeah, was picked the pagans. Well, he also um, yeah, picked the pagans um, out of Well, Ireland. he was born in the right. Yeah. So um, so he liberated Ireland, you know. Allegedly, so, ale I'm gonna go with allegedly. allegedly. That, this as, is as what far as the, this is what the as, Catholic as as, Church tells us happened, you know, like right, right. But, but going off, but going off the legend, yes, the story of Saint Patrick is about liberation. So the yes. idea that these leaders were not able to kind of go in that story slash legend slash history whatever you want to call it yeah and kind of be complicit into what's happening in palestine who are also looking for liberation i think is maddening to me um but again shout out to the people who called this out and apparently it resulted in the prime minister basically <laughs> resigning to resigning later. And I'm sure so, there might be some other I, reasons on top of that, but it definitely was kind of bad timing. So, right. But I do find it funny. I mean, story given that I've got pointed out Go that like, and what points out a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about as far as the problems with ceasefire and how it's being used and how it's a, a now a political tool, you know? So, no, it's co-opted. And, yeah. and I've said this several times. I've said this on Twitter, and I said this on Otherwise. The word is, they do this all the time. Mm -hmm. Like we saw it with George Floyd. Like they'll they see public they pressure. They kind of embrace, right? Yeah, they embrace the movement and kind of use some of the language, um, to lessen the sting that we're kind of calling for. Yeah, to nullify it into non-existence. So, but even before that, I don't think they really had to, I think the thing is, everyone was calling for a ceasefire prior, and I think that was the big mistake. Yeah. It was the, I, I really should, I really would have been like, Liberation would have been. calling for liberation, yeah. but probably the best thing to say. But if you weren't going to necessarily do that, because I know liber the word liberation triggers some folks. Yeah. A permanent, permanent ceasefire should have been the next best phrase that you should say. Yeah. Because as you said, ceasefire gives the implication that it's temporary. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that it could be a permanent thing. Well, so the idea mind... that people are call not calling for a permanent ceasefire is also and yeah. Like and you've noticed now this is what a lot of the politicians when they say it now use. Like ceasefire now whatever. So and I think in a lot of ways that's our fault once again, because we say it, but we don't think about the implications of what we're saying on the streets necessarily. And and I don't want to make it sound like people are generally being working in bad faith. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we know now that politicians will use movements to co-op, to kind of twist in the way that they can kind of get out of things. Yeah. And yeah. we need to be very careful about what our asks are because you know that they're going to twist it and kind of give us less than what we yeah, ask like for. Dealing with a genie, so, right? You can ask for your wish, but he's he going to fuck it up. You know? So, right. I mean, there's a reason why Hamas was funded by Israel to take on the PLO, Palestinian Liberation Org, right? You know, liberation is not something they want to even talk about. So right. clearly, you know, which is what happens. Uh, this is what happens. And you're going to find that the more you push back on that, the more people are willing to do a lot harder shit to get that liberation. Ireland included. Like, right. You know, we all know what happened with them and, you know, what they were willing to do. So people got convictions. You might, you might figure out that you can fuck around, but. And you might find out, so we'll see. But right, yep. You can also see some of your money, leave your wallet, and come over to us. 
um you know at co-v.com slash indie news network if you want to keep things up and running get us equipment that kind of stuff we appreciate all the help you can get and if you can't give monetarily uh we suggest if i can if it will let me click next there we go uh you can like and subscribe you can share the stream very easy very easy things to do comment again very easy you know help us get to 2k subs we're getting there we're on our way 